It's my birthday. New pottery. Yay. In celebration of my 70th birthday, Bill and I went to Cowie Mountain Clay in Franklin, North Carolina to select a few new pottery pieces to add to our Brian Davenport collection. Brian is a true artist and we really love his work. He was out of town the last time we were there, so we hoped to get to meet him on this trip. When we arrived, Brian was not in, but Angie greeted us and told us he would be back shortly. Angie is an artist also and makes all the cute, funny, and scary faces that we find on some of the jugs and mugs. She was actually working on some mugs right then and not only allowed us to come into the studio, but also allowed Bill to video her. And you'll have to put, this is something that's called the slip. It kind of just molds it together. And then you'll take some clay And here's how I make my nose. I just do a little round ball. I'll take and do that. Make sure it looks like a nose. kind of do this to, to leave no gaps if it has any air in it when it um, it'll either crack or it could just come off if you leave any kind of air so you kind of got to close the gaps and there's the nose really simple Kind of make a canoe looking thing, kind of looks like a canoe. You cut it in half. And you just come up here and stick them on. And then before you kind of, before you touch any other clay, you have to wash your hands. And make sure you have all like, all the gray off before you touch the white clay. And this is for the eyes. Just kind of round it. And then what you want to do so you get the same size on each eye is just kind of cut it in half. Like that right there. And just kind of round it a little. And you put it on. You don't want to push down too hard because then you're going to flatten the eye out. So the eyelids, the top and the bottom, is more or less to make sure the eye stays in place. Uh-oh. Cut it in half. And you, the purpose of cutting it in half, making one and cutting it in half, is so you get the same size on each eye. Just 
like that right there. Just After filming Angie, she offered to let me have a try at making a face. I'm gonna put it right there down, let you okay. look at it. All right. Um, so you dragged. Mm -hmm. Scratch wherever you're gonna put the nose. You put the nose first. Okay. And then you just some clay. Yeah, I'm making a nose. And the way I do it is just roll. roll it in a ball. Roll it in a ball. And then I just take my fingers and just kind of push down and out on the whole thing. And then push your, yeah, and then take your thumb <laughs> and push it up. Okay. Yeah, like this right here. Ah. And stick it on. Yep, stick it on. And then we'll just take, um, okay. all right. Now the eyes. Eyes, okay. And just a little scratch, same, same thing. Mm-hmm. I know, I just yeah, you cut my it finger. Out. You better leave okay. it alone while it still looks good. <laughs> so then what you're going to do is take this little guy right here. <laughs> okay. That looks very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> very good. 
again, once again, 1800. Then when the kiln cools down to about a little over a thousand, I'll take it out of the kiln, lay it on a turntable, and I'll lay a strand of horse hair on the fire. The hair is instantaneously vaporized. That's the carbon that was in the hair. I've held it just tight enough where it won't break, but I want to keep it straight. If I let it go, it's going to make a squiggly line. Now, what I was saying was that if, if this pot gets heated up again to about 12 or 1300 degrees, it's going to release that carbon. It'd come out of there white again. So these pots are very dependent on the temperature that you bring it up to, how quick you got it. It seems like the quicker you can get it there, the more intense the colors are. And you can just get all kinds of stuff going on. This is, look at this little yeah, squiggly line right here. Yeah. This, is, this is really a museum quality piece. Or you can get one like this. It's just, it, I, don't, I couldn't honestly tell you why, but it's very subdued. The colors yeah. blended, they all sort of homogenized into one color. The bottom was a little bit cooler, so it kept a lot of color. Still a gorgeous, gorgeous pot. It's just totally different than this one. Create the shine, that'd be like waxing a rusty old car thinking that you're going to get it to look real good. This just gives it a degree of protection from the oils in your hands, moisture.